right. Atomic structure seven. Compounds, molecules, and types of bonds we'll talk about today. So compounds and molecules, straightforward. Types of bonds could be a little tricky, but we'll talk about the three types. So let's just first start with compounds and molecules. Let's get a clean page going here. So let's get our pen and why don't we use why don't we use that color? So when we're talking about a molecule, so let's write molecule first. A molecule is two or more of the same, that's the key word here, of the same element. All right, so for example, let's say we had two oxygen molecules bonded together. And that's a word you should know, bond. I'm sure you understand that, you know, glued together, like in a sense. So these two oxygen um, elements bonded together, this would be O2. And I have that subscript right there, two, meaning there's two of them. And that's a molecule. And O2, by the way, is what we breathe. It's the, the air we breathe. The air we breathe in. The air we breathe. All right. So let's like make another one. All right. And then there's like O3, for example. That would be three oxygen molecules together. All right. Three of them put together. And by the way, O3 is ozone. Right. That makes up the ozone layer that protects us from ultraviolet rays. So again, the air we breathe, oh, I forgot the E, Put that E back in there. There we go, the air we breathe. So that's what a molecule is, very simple. A compound is two or more of different elements, very simple. So if we look at this picture, right, we have the atoms, right? You can have an atom here. Well, let's use yellow here to clear this up. You know, maybe, Maybe this is oxygen, who knows? You know, maybe this is carbon and maybe this is hydrogen. So there's different atoms. And if we put two carbons together, right, we have a molecule. If we put, we can put three hydrogen together, right? We have a molecule. And remember, so you have three, this will be H3. The subscript tells you how many. This will be C2. And this is O2, and you remember, that's what we breathe. So these are molecules because they're the same elements. But if you put different elements, then it's a compound. What am I saying, right? So let's say this was oxygen, and you know this one. This is the most famous one, perhaps, right? H2O, put it over here. H, there's two hydrogen and one oxygen, right? We know this is dihydrogen monoxide, dihydrogen monoxide, or water right here. So that's the difference between molecules and compounds. And here's another picture just to hit it home, right? So we have these two oxygen molecules. And again, I've been saying over and over, O2, the air we breathe. And here is dihydrogen monoxide. Right? We have oxygen and two hydrogen compounds. And by the way, now, again, these compounds have bonds, and there's types of bonds we're going to talk about very shortly. And by the way, breaking bonds is, is not easy because it's a very strong bonds. So it takes a lot of energy to break bonds. And here's some common ones, you know, H2O, like we said here. Here's ammonia. See if you could read what it says as N, which is nitrogen, right? So here's the nitrogen. We should use the yellow, make it look, stand out. So here's nitrogen. And then there's three hydrogen, and that's ammonia. That's why it has NH3. And here's carbon dioxide. So it says O2, so we know that's the oxygen. And there's the carbon, CO2. And you know CO2 is what plants want. Plants breathe in CO2 and release oxygen, in the daytime, that is. And we breathe in oxygen and release CO2. And then again, we have hydrogen peroxide here. This is almost like water, but it's H2O2, right? And again, the oxygen is bigger than hydrogen, so that's how it would look, hydrogen peroxide. All right, and the next... Uh, part is bonds. So there's three types of bonds we'll talk about. 
Actually, we'll talk about two in this video. I'll mention the third one. So you can have covalent bond, covalent bond. And covalent bonds, just basically, they're non-metal, a non-metal to a non-metal. Non-metal to non-metal. That's the bond of covalent. And there could be two types, and we'll talk about it in a minute. So, for example, you could take hydrogen, which is a non-metal, and oxygen, a non-metal. So, non-metal to non-metal is covalent bond. Then there is ionic bonds. Now, ionic bonds are non-metal to metal. That's an ionic bond. So, for example, non-metal could be um, like chlorine, and a metal would be sodium, soft metal. Of course, you should know that when you put sodium and chlorine together, it makes table salt. That's an ionic bond. And the third one, which we'll talk about in another video, is metallic bonding. And guess what metallic would be? What's missing from this? It's metal to metal, exactly. So those are the three types of bonds we'll talk about. In this video, though, we'll just concentrate on covalent and ionic. Now, I did mention there are two types of covalent bonds. So there are polar and nonpolar, and P we'll call it. So let's talk about polar and nonpolar covalent bonds. Clear this out. So I'll write up here, we'll put covalent bonds. And remember, covalent is nonmetal to nonmetal. So let's just take the one we talked about before. We have oxygen, put O for oxygen, and we have our hydrogen. Now this covalent bond will be called polar. And the reason why it will be called polar is because there's a charge to it. Not a phi, but a charge. So what's happening in here, in very simple terms, is the atoms are not sharing equally. They're not sharing equally. In covalent bonds, there is a sharing. But in polar covalent, they're not shared equally. And I'll explain that. So in order to understand that, we should know something about ions. Very well, Let's explain ions first. So ions, they could be, they have either, or either, however you want to say it, they have either more electrons than protons or more protons than electrons. So look at that if you didn't understand it. So in a what we call in the on the periodic table when you see an element like oxygen for example it will have the same number of electrons and protons. But if oxygen gains one more electron, it'll be an ion. Or if it loses an electron, it'll become an ion. So let me show you a picture of that. All right, so here's oxygen. Now, if you notice, if you count the electrons in the shells, right, there's two in the first shell right over here. Make sure we have our pen ready. And it has a total of eight electrons. Well, it has it's right up here eight electro eight electrons and it has eight protons now if it gains another el electron let's say this guy joins the party now it'll have more electrons than protons and it'll become an ion if it loses an electron so let's say this electron wasn't there and this one decides to leave and I'm just oversimplifying it. But if it has more protons than electrons, it's also an ion. Now remember, electrons have a negative charge. Have a negative charge. And protons have a positive charge. And you also know that there's neutrons in the nucleus. They have no charge. Now, if there are more electrons than protons, it'll be a negative ion. 
That's like negative ion. That's a symbol for negative. If it has more protons, it's a positive ion. So rewind if you don't understand that. So that's what an ion is. Now let's go back to a covalent bond. Let's, let's just clear this out. So in covalent bonds, some people say covalent, but it's covalent bonds. The key word is that they're sharing. Everyone's sharing. In ionic bonds, there's no sharing involved. There's taking. But we'll talk about that. So again, we have polar or nonpolar. Now in polar, it's an unequal sharing. Unequal share. Where in nonpolar, it's an equal share. So that's a way to remember it also. Now with water, it's an unequal share. Here's oxygen, here's hydrogen. They're sharing electrons, so it's, it's a covalent bond. But oxygen is sh grabbing more of the share. So oxygen is grabbing more of the share. It's like you have a friend and you're sharing Doritos and you know, you take half the bag, well, more than half the bag, you know, you take whatever amount of chips and you just give him two. You are sharing, but it's an unequal sharing. So because there's an unequal sharing, because oxygen is actually grabbing more of the electrons, oxygen is going to get a negative charge to it because there's more electrons coming in. And hydrogen will have a positive charge. So that's why it's polar because there's a charge. Just think of it as unequal sharing. Now, if there is sharing going on, then it's an equal share. It'll be nonpolar. And here's CO2, right? So in CO2, it's nonpolar. Why? Because they're equally sharing. And again, remember, covalent bonds is nonmetal to nonmetal. Remember that. Now we have ionic bonding. Remember, ionic bonding is a nonmetal to a metal. This image is a little blurry, but there is no sharing going involved here. It's a taking. And to before I go over this, I should mention something called the octet rule. Let's talk about the octet rule. So basically, when you have an electron, the electrons, when you have an element, that is not an electron, when you have an element, like, like sodium over here, let's get a better picture of this first of all. Let's go back to oxygen. Now, the octet rule, let's use blue, why not? The octet rule, and you can see by the word oct, it means eight, like octagon, right? October used to be the eighth month many thousands of years ago during the Roman Empire. So if you notice on the first shell, the K shell, the first shell, and I have videos talking about these shells or orbits, Sometimes they're called orbits, they're called shells, they're called rings, and so forth. They're also called, they're also called clouds and energy levels, right? energy levels. And I have other videos on this. I just, I don't want to go too deep into this, um, but you should know that this is a Bohr model. Niles Bohr created this teaching model. And it really doesn't look like this. Uh, um, electrons are not really particles, and they don't go around the nucleus. But we're just just for teaching purposes, we're using this, and that would be the L ring. So on the K ring, the first ring, the K ring, you can only have up to two. So you notice oxygen or has its two. And by the way, this is the S subshell. You can only have two S subshells no matter what level you are. Like on the second level, the L level, you see there's two again. And then the P, this is the P subshell, and there's more, right? We'll just stick with the S and P right now. The P subshell, you can only have up to six. So if you count, and on the second ring, you can have a total of eight. That's where we get the octet rule from. So you notice oxygen. Let's look at the second shell. It has one, 
two, it has its two S's, so it's filled, and then it's P's, three, four, five, six. So oxygen could have two more electrons. It wants two more electrons. So in a sense, it's not a living thing, but oxygen wants to complete its ring. And most atoms want that. They want to complete their ring. So oxygen needs two more. And you notice that it got those two more when it bonded with hydrogen. But it wasn't, it was actually sharing the electrons, but it still gained two more electrons. Now, if you notice something like um, helium, let me show you helium. So helium's complete. It has its two electrons. It's filled one shell. It only has one shell, so it's complete. By the way, helium is a noble gas, and noble gases have complete shells. And there is a video on the octet rule. It's actually the next video on the octet rule. We'll go over that more. So just think about this. The elements want to complete their shell. So let's go back to sodium. So if you see sodium, here we go, in the first shell, first orbit, the first cloud, whatever you want to call it, the first ring. There's the K, the L, and the M. It's complete. The K is complete, and the L has its eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But on the third ring, it only has one. So it wants seven more. And there's more to this, which I'll talk about in the octet rule. But you notice it does want seven more. So it's either going to gain seven more or lose one. It's easier to lose one. So in a sense, sodium, in a sense, wants to lose one so it can be complete. If you understand that. And so what happens is chlorine comes into the picture. By the way, chlorine is a deadly gas. And sodium by itself, this is not the sodium that you have in your food, right? It's, no, this is pure sodium. Pure sodium is a soft silver metal. And you don't want to swallow it because it reacts violently with water. But if you put these two together, you get table salt. So let's look at that again now. So sodium wants to lose an electron so it can be complete. And chlorine, I'll show you chlorine, it wants to gain one. All right, so if you count chlorine, it has a complete first shell, has a complete second shell. And for the third shell, if you count them, let's make sure our pen's are ready. And again, there's more to this. I'm going to explain in the octet rule because there's other orbitals that we have to deal with. We're only dealing with the S and P to be complete. So let's look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It wants one more. And it's going to take it. It's actually going to take it. It's not going to share. It's going to take it from sodium. And there's going to be a strong ionic bond. It's almost like, like a magnet coming together. Where a, all right, and here's sodium chloride. So sodium got its wish. It lost its electron. Chlorine got its wish. It gained it. And they're bonded here. It's a really tight ionic bond. So let's review. Let's get a clean page and review here. And by the way, metallic, again, which we're going to go over in other videos, it's metal to metal. So let's get a clear page. All right, and we'll review. And we have, so and make sure... We have our atoms, our molecules, and our compounds. We talked about molecules ago have the same element. Compounds have different ones. So for covalent bonds, they could either be polar or nonpolar, which we talked about. Polar means that there are unequal share, an unequal share, which we talked about, and there is an equal share. And the big thing about covalent is it's share. They're sharing. Sharing. Whereas on ionic, there's no sharing. It's taking. They take to complete their set. And again, with covalent, it is non-metal to non-metal, where ionic was non-metal to metal. All right. That's our video. Next video, we'll talk about the octet rule.